Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Purism Librem 13 V2 notebook. It's a relatively compact laptop computer that measures about 0.7 inches thick and weighs about 3.3 pounds. It has a 13.3 inch full HD 1920 by 1080 pixel matte display, and this particular configuration has an Intel Core i5 Skylake processor and 8 gigabytes of RAM and 250 gigabytes of solid state storage. I'll walk you through the hardware a little bit more in a moment, but first I wanted to talk about what makes this laptop special. It comes from a company or actually a social purpose corporation called Purism, which has an emphasis on free and open source software and privacy and security. And so it's one of a relatively small number of laptop computers that ships with a GNU Linux uh, distribution instead of Windows or Apple's Mac OS. It has hardware switches right here that actually let you completely sever the connection to the physical hardware for the webcam and for the wireless. So if I toggle the switch, the webcam literally cannot connect no matter what you do. It's, it's almost like unplugging a USB webcam. Same goes for turning off the wireless. And for uh, privacy and security purposes, that means that nobody can remotely take control of your webcam and start shooting pictures, and nobody can access your computer if it's offline without having physical access to your computer. So uh, that's something that you won't find on a lot of other laptops. This particular model uh, with this configuration sells for around $1,540. The entry level price is about $1,399 which makes this relatively expensive when, for a computer with the kind of specs that I've just outlined for you, but there aren't a lot of other machines that have those physical switches or uh, which feature this software that really is designed for free and open source enthusiasts, uh, or not necessarily just enthusiasts, but people who really sort of value those, uh, those features for privacy and security and other things. Um, in terms of hardware, what we've got here are uh, USB, headset and power jacks and a little uh, physical reset button. Full-size SD card slot, USB uh, Type-C, HDMI, and another USB port. And if we flip it over and take a look at the back, you'll notice that there are uh, stereo speakers and about eight, no, actually 12 small screws on the back of the computer. And if you take those off, you can access the inside where you'll find um, memory slot for uh, RAM, a solid state storage M2 SSD slot, and a 2.5 inch drive bay where you can put a laptop uh, hard drive in there as well as access to the wireless card. So it's relatively easy to upgrade or replace the hardware if that is something that you choose to do. It has an aluminum case which is uh, all black, fairly professional looking. It is a little bit of a fingerprint uh, oil magnet so I don't know how well this comes across on the video here, but you can sort of see, even though I've wiped it down a little bit, uh, after using it a little bit and just sort of carrying it around, you'll see some sort of fingerprint marks there. The keyboard and touchpad are nice looking, and it's got uh, backlit keys here, which I don't know if I can turn on before I log in. Let's see. Yep. Uh, so backlit keys and nice and wide multi-touch supports up to four finger touch but it's not the most precise touchpad that I've ever used, and I really prefer using this uh, uh, computer with a mouse plugged in. And as for the keyboard, it's, it feels relatively good when typing, but I just find I have more typos on this than on most machines, particularly when I'm doing things like trying to hit shift and capitalize. I have a lot of lowercase letters coming through when I mean it uh, to be uh, capitalized. The more I use it, the more I sort of get used to, uh, to using the laptop, uh, the fewer typos I have, but those are probably some of the weak points. The other one is probably battery life. Uh, while Purism says that you should be able to get seven to nine hours of battery life, I think four to six is more likely based on my usage. Uh, one more thing to point out on the keyboard is where you would normally find a Windows key. There's a nice big rectangle key here and it has similar functionality. So let me go ahead and log in here. And I've dimmed the screen so that you can sort of see things well from different angles, but let's go ahead and brighten it so that you can see what I'm doing. And again, as I mentioned, it is a matte display. So we got a little bit of reflection from a bright light source here, but overall it's, uh, it's not really a lot of glare. And as you probably just noticed, the screen brightness goes from very, very dim to fairly bright. Just go ahead and bring this up a little bit closer and I'll show you a little bit of what we can do. So this is running uh, something called PureOS, which is based on Debian Linux. 
and it has the GNOME desktop environment. Out of the box, it uh, doesn't have a lot of apps installed. It does have LibreOffice, it does have a web browser called Pure Browser, which is rather interesting in that, besides being very, very bright, um, it comes with a couple of add-ons preloaded, including uBlock Origin and HTTPS Everywhere. So again, a real uh, strong emphasis on security and privacy. Uh, as I mentioned, the webcam, has a physical switch. So it right now thinks there is no web, uh, no camera plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and close the camera app. And there's no camera app even pre-installed. I had to download and install that one. I'm gonna turn on the webcam. And here we go. Again, I'm gonna flip the switch. And this time, It'll just say there's an error playing back video. If I flip the switch again, I'm gonna to need to restart that program before I can use it. But so, if you wanna make video calls, if you wanna uh, do video recordings, you're gonna to need to make sure that the toggle is in the appropriate position. Um, overall, in terms of performance, I'm pretty happy. Uh, the, the computer feels a lot like you would expect any Skylake-based system to, do, uh, to feel. Uh, out of the box, some applications you might run into trouble with. So for instance, I noticed that using Pure Browser, I literally just could not get it to run to uh, to load certain web pages, including YouTube and Gmail. And uh, there is a workaround coming. Uh, so I'm shooting this video on August 25th, 2017. And the folks at Purism told me that a future software update will fix that issue for people who want to access those sites. I suspect a lot of people who are really concerned about privacy don't want to use those Google sites that much. I, however, uh, do use Google Chrome on a daily basis to get my work done, so I went ahead and installed the Chrome web browser. And by doing that, I had no problem going to YouTube. Um, in terms of videos, uh, YouTube video works just fine. I had no problem playing back local videos. Uh, things did get a little bit more confusing. That's the wrong Brad Linder. <laughs> Uh, I did have more difficulty though um, with Netflix and Amazon Video. For those, you might Hi need guys, to I'm Carly Kloss, and I just created my own website. jump through a couple of hoops Google if you want to get them working. Again, if you're mostly concerned with, with privacy and security, then that might not necessarily be an issue for you. Um, in terms of software, there is this sort of software store here. Uh, Purism has its own repositories, and so you can go in and you can find audio and video software. You can find uh, graphics and photography, productivity, add-ons, games. The game selection is not stellar, so I tried downloading and installing a couple of third-party games, but I ran into some difficulty with that. So for instance, let's go ahead and back here to the list of all available applications. Uh, Zero AD, which is a real-time strategy game, I found that from the software store, works uh, works fine. It's, uh, it's a little Age of Empires-like, and it's an excellent game. Um, from Humble Bundle and good old games, I tried installing a couple of games. Some just wouldn't install. Some installed, but then whenever I tried to actually play the game, they freeze. So this is pretty much what happens every time I try to run this game. And the only thing I've been able to figure out that will let me kill it is a little xkill command. Um, so that's the thing is in terms of ease of use, I would say if you're not super familiar with Linux and you're comfortable just using the applications that are available from the uh, software center, there's a lot you can do with this computer. Is it something that's worth spending $1,400 or more on? I'm not sure. If you know your way around command line tools, uh, there's probably a lot more you can do. And I'm a casual Linux user at best. I've been using it on and off for years, but never as my primary operating system. So there's some things that I had to look up and figure out how to do, uh, and some things that I just didn't even bother trying to do. So for instance, uh, if you can install the Chrome web browser or special versions of Firefox or add-ons, then you could probably get Netflix to work. But again, I don't think Netflix is necessarily gonna be a high priority for people who buy a computer with an emphasis on privacy and security. Um, the mediocre keyboard and touchpad and battery life uh, give me pause, but everything else that this laptop's supposed to do, it pretty much does, actually with one exception, Bluetooth. Uh, currently, Bluetooth is not working. That is something that Purism is, is hoping to bring to 
uh, future software updates. So there was hardware for Bluetooth, but right now it's not working. And um, that brings me to another thing is in addition to running the pure OS operating system, this uses Core Boot, which is an open source alternative to bio, uh, BIOS or uh, UEFI uh, software. So it, there's a real strong emphasis here on uh, software freedom. And generally speaking, the laptop delivers on that promise. So there's not a lot of other things like it on the market. There are a couple of companies that'll sell you a laptop with Ubuntu uh, or another operating Linux-based operating system. Companies like System76 or Zareason. Dell even sells a couple of Ubuntu uh, machines. But generally speaking, they don't have a custom-built operating system that's designed to emphasize uh, software freedom and uh, privacy and security the way this is. And the fact that each hardware component was chosen to be able to work with the software, the fact that there are uh, physical kill switches for some of the hardware that you might not want to use all the time, and uh, if nothing else, the fact that you've got this little button here that doesn't show a Windows icon, I think is going to make some people who really would prefer not to give any money to Microsoft to pay for Windows, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of nice features to have here. But again, in terms of that Windows tax, you're not giving any money to pay for a Windows license when you buy this, but you're also not saving money because it's a computer that comes from a company or a social benefit corporation that, uh, or social purpose corporation that does relatively small volume sales and therefore it's, uh, it's premium. It's uh, 1399 and up because it just, the economies of scale don't really allow it to be significantly cheaper than that uh, while the uh, organization tries to actually make a profit. So as a social purpose corporation, they, uh, they are trying to make money. It's just not the only thing that Purism is trying to do. So anyways, again, that is a look at the Purism Librem 13 V2, which is a Linux-based computer with core boot uh, firmware and hardware switches to enable and disable the wireless and the camera. Not a lot of other things like it on the market. It's definitely not necessarily a laptop for everybody. It would be nice if it had slightly better features on the, uh, the hard, uh, keyboard and the touchpad. It would be nice if the battery life was a little bit better. It's nice that it's easy to upgrade. And if you go to lilliputing.com, I'll show you a picture of what you can see under the hood in terms of upgradable hardware. And if you don't like pure OS, uh, you probably could install another operating system on this relatively easily. But uh, I think part of the reason to buy this is because you value the, uh, the ideals that purism is, is uh, putting forth. And part of the reason is probably to, uh, to help support purism. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing. Um, and the Purism Librem 13 V2. And generally speaking, I like the operating system. I like the laptop. I uh, wish I liked typing on it a little bit better. Oh, I should mention that in, in terms of typing, I plugged in an external keyboard and mouse. I plugged in an external display. Uh, had no problems using it as my primary work machine for a couple of days where I was getting most of the work that I needed to get done, done on this computer uh, using a dual display setup with an extended desktop or a mirrored desktop. I also had no problems connecting to a wireless printer on my network. So hardware-wise, in terms of ease of use, if you're just looking for something that comes with Linux preloaded, this this works. You don't need to go through a lot of work trying to uh, to figure out how to configure things, unless it comes to installing third-party software, which is something that, as I mentioned, I did have a lot of trouble. I downloaded a number of different third-party applications, and it was pretty hit or miss on whether or not the installers would complete properly. Um, but again, I haven't tried any operating systems other than Pure OS, so... Um, if you're not happy with the, with the software, you can change it. So gonna wrap up again, this time for real. This is Brad Linder, Purism Librem 13 V2, which is uh, available from uh, Purism's website for 13.99 and up.